As Democrats and Republicans battle for control of the U.S. Senate this fall, how impactful is a primary endorsement among Republicans from former President Donald Trump? On May 3rd, in the swing state of Ohio, Republicans will choose among seven candidates to replace retiring GOP Senator Rob Portman. On Friday, President Trump announced his preference, J.D. Vance, the author of the book Hillbilly Elegy and a former Trump antagonist. Despite the fact that, as Politico reported, more than three dozen county GOP chair and state party central committee members banded together to sign a letter urging Trump not to endorse Vance, noting that he, quote, referred to your supporters as racists and proudly voted for Evan McMullen in 2016. This comes on the heels of a Trump endorsement in my home state of Pennsylvania, where Republican Pat Toomey is retiring. Trump endorsed Mehmet Oz for the primary here, which takes place on May 17. His statement read in part, Oz has lived with us through the screen and has always been popular, respected, and smart. He even said that I was in extraordinary health, which made me like him more, although he also said that I should lose a couple of pounds. After Trump's original pick, Sean Parnell dropped out of the race, Dr. Oz and hedge fund CEO Dave McCormick had been competing for Trump's endorsement. Both candidates traveled to Mar-a-Lago to kiss the ring. McCormick had been thought to have the inside track because he's married to former Trump Deputy National Security Advisor Dina Powell, and his campaign includes several Trump veterans, including Hope Hicks. Joining me now to discuss is Selena Zito, a columnist for the New York Post and national political reporter for the Washington Examiner, where she wrote this piece, What the Hell Was He Thinking? Pennsylvania conservatives react to Trump's support of Oz. Actually, Selena, here's more of what you wrote. It was a decision that left many dedicated Trump supporters perplexed. Why did he choose someone who had not resonated with conservatives in such a key state on the Senate map? Who whispered in his ear that this was a good idea? Salino, he is, he's like a moth to a flame, you know? He, he loves controversy, and the more you tell him not to do something, I'm convinced the odds are higher. That's exactly what he'll do. You're exactly right. And that is part of both of his appeal and part of why other people didn't like him in 2016 and 2020. So there's a lot there's a lot to unpack with this endorsement and why Pennsylvania conservatives across the state, I mean not all of them, but but a lot of them were really upset about this choice. They, they actually thought that that um, that Trump was going to sit this one out. And his decision to endorse Oz, who hasn't really stuck with the, um, the primary voters, if people don't know this, in Pennsylvania, it's a closed primary. So Republicans have to register Republicans vote for Republican candidates and register Democrats vote for Democrats. In Ohio yesterday, he endorsed J.D. Vance. Here's something J.D. Vance said in the past about Donald Trump. I'm a never Trump guy. I never liked him. And I've, 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 but I've noticed uh, this willingness from people who think a lot like I do that, look, we told you so. To all these white working class voters, we told you so. We told you that Trump was going to be a terrible candidate. We told you that you were an idiot if you voted for him. The problem is, if you take that attitude of sort of gloating over Trump's defeat, then you're playing into the very thing that gave rise to Trump in the first place, which is a feeling that the elites think that they're smarter than you and just think you're a bunch of idiots. Selena, it's astounding. I guess if my glass is half full toward the former president, I would say he really is a forgiving guy. I mean, you're never dead to Trump. You can fall in and out of his orbit. Look, I think there's a nuance that people are missing. There, Trump received more votes than in 2020 than he did in 2017. And that's because people change their minds. People change their minds all the time. They can literally loathe someone and end up voting for them um, four years later. That's why traditionally presidents get more uh, votes in their second um, uh, in, in their reelect. Uh, Barack Obama was one of the few candidates who didn't do that. So I, I think that, uh, you know, there, and the other nuance is, is there, there are voters, primary voters in Pennsylvania that are really mad that he did this. However, that does not mean they don't like him anymore. The, it, and, and it goes to that point where, you know, it, people always call Trump uh, voters members of a cult. 
I, I think that that proves that that is not the case. They don't go in lockstep with everything that he does. If Dr. Oz loses the, here's what I hear you saying. If Dr. Oz loses the race and all of a sudden the world of punditry says, oh, what a major setback for Donald Trump, I hear Selena Zito saying, not really. His, his supporters will still be for him, even if they weren't on this pick. There, 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 it, definitely that. Although, <laughs> I think we should also keep in mind, if Oz loses, if um, his uh, Purdue loses in Georgia, if um, uh, Liz Cheney wins in Wyoming, all of a sudden things start to change because then that's that's not telling you that people don't like Trump anymore, but that is telling you that, as I've always said, Trump support the the. Carl Populist co conservative coalition was not caused by him. He was the result of it, and they may be moving on. In politics, it is always like tectonic plates. There's always movement, and we tend to miss that because it's just a tiny shift. Selena Zito, the Trump whisperer. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you.